welcome. I think we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, thank you very much for joining our session today. This is Bye Bye Bubble Sheets, uh, where we're going to talk about the benefits of integrated online course evaluations. And my name is Peter Pravikoff. I'm the Vice President of Sales and Marketing with Evaluation Kit, and I'm joined by my colleague John Prokos, the Academic Technology Director at Holt International Business School. This will be a session in two parts. I will start with a little bit of background on Evaluation Kit and a very quick overview of our solution, really just focusing on how it interacts with Canvas and our integrations. And then John will take over and share uh, the, his experiences um, at Holt implementing Evaluation Kit and some of their successes, and then we should have a few minutes for questions and answers at the end, okay? So a little bit of background on Evaluation Kit. We offer, in a nutshell, a fully hosted online course evaluation and survey solution. Um, started about eight years ago and have grown to well over 200 implementations, uh, primarily in higher education. Um, we were the very first Canvas uh, partner in the course evaluation space, and today we are the only Canvas Alliance level partner uh, in the course evaluation space, which ultimately translates into feature pack turnkey integrations for our customers, and we're gonna talk about those today. Um, I think one of the other keys to our success has been uh, a very scalable pricing model where we have licenses for institutions large and small um, that work well. There are really four key areas that we focus on in terms of developing and delivering our solution. Number one, we want it to be easy to implement. Um, beyond initial implementation, though, we also want it to be simple to manage on an ongoing basis. We're really focused on providing features to drive response rates in online surveys, and then ultimately, we want to ensure that reporting is powerful, but also easy for folks to access and easy for them to use. So those are really the four key areas we focus on um, and spend our time working on day in and day out. Let's start by talking about uh, integration with Canvas. There are two integrations that we provide that des are designed to fulfill different purposes, a data integration and a user integration. The data integration allows your campus survey administrator to search for and select the courses to be evaluated in Canvas and transfer and sync that data within your Evaluation Kit survey account. The second integration is user integration, and this facilitates a single sign-on between Canvas and Evaluation Kit for students taking surveys as well as for instructors accessing results. Um, seamless access for both parties, these integrations are included in all of our licenses and are turnkey. They literally take you know, an hour or less for the Canvas administrator to implement. All right, so let's talk a little bit more about the data integration. What does that look like? Um, I mentioned that it allows the survey administrator to pull data from Canvas into the Evaluation Kit account. So in online surveys, you want to make sure that you're pre-enrolling students in surveys according to the courses in which they're enrolled, and you're including the instructor information. Um, so that from a reporting perspective, all of that data is tracked. And our integration with Canvas makes that process very, very easy, where the administrator can choose the Canvas data import, they can search based on a variety of different criteria, name, course, course ID, course code, um, or term, and then choose to transfer not just the course information, but all of the enrolled student and instructor information in one fell swoop. Once the initial load of data um, comes in, it's possible to schedule enrollment refreshes. So you can see we've got all of those courses loaded in, but what if the enrollments in those courses change between now and the time that the surveys are actually scheduled to run? And that's where the enrollment refresh comes into play, where you can tell the system, hey, every day, every two days, every seven days, or on specific days, go back and take the latest list of enrollments in Canvas and reflect those in my survey project and evaluation kit. That way you're ensured that you're surveying the right students um, when your surveys go out. And as you can see, you can schedule those enrollment refreshes uh, on whatever basis you like, uh, interval basis or on particular dates and times, maybe the day after your withdraw drop deadline. Okay, so that's the data integration. Now let's talk about the user integration. Couple different moving parts to this. Um, one, uh, based on our integration, you're able to add course links to surveys automatically. So when the surveys open, students will see a new link in their navigation in Canvas to course evaluations. Um, you, those links will disappear when the survey ends. Um, and they're noticeable because they weren't there from the beginning of the class. So students see those um, and are prompted to click them. You can also add calendar items um, via the API, which means that when surveys open, notifications appear in student calendars, alerting them that they have surveys to take. And when they click the links, and those notifications are taken directly into 
their surveys and evaluation kit. And I'll show you what that looks like in just a sec. So survey period's open. I'm a student going to log into Canvas. When I choose the Canvas course I want to access, the system performs a check to identify if I have any surveys to take. And if I do, it prompts me with this on-screen notification letting me know whatever message you want to convey. Course evaluations are underway. Now's the time to complete them. Please take a moment and complete the survey now. You'll notice there's a do it later option um, in that box. That's something that the institution actually can control. So some institutions will include it and let students procrastinate. Others will remove that and force the student to at least go to the survey. Then they may give them an opportunity to, to opt out of the survey at that point. So we really want to provide the institution with the ability to determine just how aggressive or compulsory you want your course evaluations to be. But of course, what you hope the student does is sees the notification, clicks go to survey, takes them directly into their survey and evaluation kit framed up within Canvas so the student can answer the questions on the survey, submit the survey, and they're done. Now, when they submit the survey, they're taken to their evaluation kit dashboard. So the, the theory here is while they're in survey taking mode, why not capitalize on that and take them to a dashboard that presents them with the rest of the surveys that they have to take and gives me an opportunity to see, A, I successfully completed that first survey, and B, I've got three more to take. I might as well just go ahead and knock those out and take care of those now. Um, calendar notification I mentioned would appear um, in the student's calendar based on when the evaluations for that course uh, open, and the student has the ability to click that calendar link, which would again take them right into the survey for that course, all via single sign-on. So that's a really quick overview of how our integration with Canvas works. Um, there's a lot more to the system um, that we're happy to go into in, a, in an individualized demo. You'll have an opportunity to ask questions at the end, and we can also take information if you'd like to schedule a demo um, after the fact. At this point, though, what I'd like to do is hand things over to John Prokos uh, with Holt and have him talk a little bit about their experiences. Hey, thanks, Peter. Hi, everybody. So I am from the Holt International Business School, and I have, we're an international Canvas client, but it's actually a tad embarrassing because I'm asking, so where are you based? And I say, oh, Boston. So I'm from the Boston campus, so the least international, international Canvas client. Um, but we have five campuses around the world, and we have about uh, 3,500 students. So even though we're not a huge school, having the multiple campuses, we really wanted a solution that could accommodate a lot of different hierarchies and groups, and I think any big school would feel the same way. Um, so really international student body, we have 140 nationalities, students speak 105 languages, everything that was in English. So it was a, and a lot of students are coming from a background where they're not used to filling out course, uh, course surveys. So just kind of our process, we used to use um, CAMS, that's a Three Rivers system, it's an SIS product for course surveys. And it was really, it, it did not work out well. Um, it, it was time consuming. It, it was not a platform students interacted with daily. They're in Canvas day in and day out. We only have them access our SIS system basically for final grades. And the timelines didn't match up. They couldn't go in if they had financial holds, academic holds. At the end of the day, we really want every student's evaluation. We don't care if they're on academic probation. We don't care if they have a financial hold. Um, there was also some faculty administrative work we had to do with the old system, and just faculty wanted to be totally hands-off. They didn't want to be involved in the evaluation process, um, which is reasonable. And again, the lack of the fact that it was a platform that required an additional sign-on really was a no-go for us. So we wanted a simple solution. We did kind of a, a search among a number of providers. You know, we were using Canvas at the time, so that was our number one. We wanted full integration with Canvas. We wanted single sign-on. SSO, we wanted to reduce our admin time and uh, up our response rates. We were getting pretty low, you know, south of 50%, sometimes south of 30%. Uh, eliminate faculty involvement and the ability to deploy unique surveys basically for select courses easily. We had a hard time doing that in CAMS. We have a lot of pilot courses and test courses and the like. So we did a, a pilot. We had the ability to test on one of our campuses. I mean, a, could be done with one department or program. And we have a postgrad program and undergrad program. So we rolled it out first in postgrad. And the undergrad rollout followed. And it, it worked really well for us. Um, you know, we were able to reduce our admin time. We didn't have to 
going to class all the time, you know, every single survey to get students to do it. And um, it gave us a lot more customization reporting. You know, we want to be able to compare. A lot of our faculty teach at different campuses. We want to compare different campuses, make sure there's no divergence in quality of teaching, professor standards. Um, and our response rates went up. So we went up to around, you know, 40 was probably about the average. Now we're around 70, um, which is, is really good. We're pleased with that number. I mean, obviously, higher is better, but 70 is we're comfortable gives us an accurate representation of what students are uh, getting from the course. And it was really easy to roll out. You know, he was talking about, Peter was talking about the Canvas integration. I mean, you don't have to enter in any of this information. It pulls everything in. There's very little administrative time. Once you configure it and set it up, you really, it's kind of on autopilot. I mean, if you're maintaining everything in Canvas correctly, it's gonna come through to Evaluation Kit correctly. Um, you know, we didn't have to anymore, what's my password again questions. You know, I work in the technology department and that's kind of a, one of our most feared questions and most annoying questions. So anything we can do to reduce that is a plus. Um, and some of the features he, you know, he spoke about earlier, the on-screen reminder, we removed the ability for students to bypass that reminder. And it, that worked out really well for us. I mean, maybe it's a little bit annoying, but it really does force the student to go in there, take the evaluation, and students got used to it. Um, and when we first rolled this out, we did have our, our registrars go into the class to kind of make sure students were taking the online uh, assessment. And I think for us, that was an important part of the rollout, but as students got used to the process throughout the year, we stopped having registrars going and we didn't see you know, much of a dip in our response rates. So that was great to save their time. Um, and so this is a little bit about the workflow, just how we configured it. Like Peter said, we can, I'm happy to talk one-on-one -on -one about a little more of the details. I think every institution will have kind of their own settings. But EvalKit allowed us to try out a lot of different settings. And when we first went with this, we tried different time spans, we allowed students to answer, different sets of how frequently they'd be reminded to kind of come up with something that really worked well for us. So I think you know, the ability to really quickly change those things is kind of the key takeaway. Um, you know, what we do may not work for other schools. But um, super easy, the hierarchy mapping was probably one of my favorite features. It's a little you know, geeky, but it's very easy using course titles we use to kind of map a whole complex hierarchy automatically. You know, because we need to have all our programs mapped, our um, undergrad, postgrad, and then the campuses. And, um, you know, it's just, with this, you know, and the, the consistent Canvas updates, there's no users ever left out of this. You, know, you don't have to worry about updating the data. Students know if they're not in their Canvas course. These are our institutions, so it's just, we never have a student left out. And you can really badger them a lot. I mean, you may not want to over badger them, but the eval kit allows you to send frequent reminders and really get them where they are. Results, like analyzing the results has been huge for us. Um, you know, they're immediately available. There's eight different templates of kind of reports that make report building easily. Uh, we have our own kind of custom one we've made, and we also have some ways of pulling that data out into other analysis systems that we use. Um, and again, very easy to compare among the groups we want to compare. And so the, the takeaway for us, I mean, is EvalKit has become sort of, I was telling Peter this, maybe he doesn't like this, but kind of a, a boring system. Uh, and I mean this in a positive way. You know, once we set it up, it, it really kind of runs on its own. We, there's not a whole lot of administrative work needed. Our, our registrar is just going occasionally to update the dates of when we want students to take the evaluation. Everything else is pulled in from Canvas. So it's a, in some ways an easy one to kind of forget about and the single sign-on makes it so a lot of students, they don't know they're interacting with a separate platform. Faculty don't really either, they think it's part of Canvas. And um, you know, we've got students used to taking surveys online, so it's, it's a, they're not surprised by it, they're used to taking it, they're willing to take them now. And like I said, in the beginning, probably good to have you know, some training, maybe a little bit of supervision, but once they're used to it, very simple. And you know, play around with the ideal level of alerts. You know, it's easy to monitor response rate in real time, so you can try different approaches, try different ways, and you know, Valkit makes it really great. And with any rollout, it's good to have a, you know, a super user. We had one of our registrars, we kind of made sure she was very well trained and kind of evangelized to other staff on this, so there's a lot of buy-in pretty quickly. And we're glad we went with it. So you know, I think 
that's kind of our experience and take some questions. Yeah? So with, with our results, um, the red, yeah, so the question was who does what with the results and when? So our registrars and deans are kind of the master of the results. So after a course is done, we do 48 hours, the survey's open. Once it closes, the registrars, is kind of a single click, they pull a report and they email it to the faculty. The faculty can actually see the results on their own in their course page as well. But we, you know, some of the faculty, they, they like getting emailed out to them, so we have the registrars just pull a PDF, email it out to them. Then we also have at all of our terms, the deans get feedback on you know, every single faculty member's evaluations. And then we have kind of a global audit as well. So there's kind of three reports, faculty report, a campus report in our sense, and it's global report on program. Yeah. So I'll just add on to that for a second. You know, in my experience, I never cease to be amazed at the variables in, in which ways institutions handle course evaluation data. Some institutions, only the faculty get to see the results. Other institutions, administration can see aggregate results but not course level results. We learned early on that we needed to make sure that the system was configurable. So if you're like Holt or if you're different, there are settings that allow you to control who accesses results and when they access results and for how long they access results so that, you know, in some cases this is faculty contract related. Um, so there's a lot of configurability with respect to these. Cool. Yeah. Um, concerning timing and the content be customized for different courses? So the question was, can the survey uh, timing and content be customized in different courses? And yeah, it totally can. So once you import, once the courses are all imported from Canvas, we just, you can choose, you kind of have survey projects and you can choose which courses those projects are deployed to. So you can have, you know, any number of different projects and different surveys, um, and you can choose which courses those are targeted to. Within a project, you also have the ability to have tiered surveys. So if you have questions that fit for all courses across the board, and then you have questions that are specific to a particular department or a type of course, um, there's targeted surveys that can be set to those specific courses. The, the nice thing is it's seamless from a student perspective. So they still just have one survey to take in that scenario, but their survey has a collection of questions from your main survey and then any of your targeted surveys. And even instructor um, customized or department customized questions, if you permit them, can be rolled into the, the same survey. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so we, I, we had sort of, a, uh, the question was how long did it take students to get used to the process um, of taking surveys? And we have sort of a unique situation. Some of our students, again, are coming from countries where there's, there's not an expectation of anonymity. anonymity. So um, it, it took us a little bit longer, I think, just the whole concept of anonymous surveys in general for some students. Um, but, you know, we probably had our registrars go in for our, our first term we have a five module structure, so about one fifth of a year. Um, that worked well for us, and just we felt it would be weird to do it any less than that. We wanted to do a full uh, term. And it's also a year program, so again, I think if you had a four year program, you wouldn't need to do that each year. But we're just a one year program, so it's kind of a pretty through, uh, quick cycle through. Yeah, I'll defer to Peter. We disabled that one, so I'm not sure. <laughs> and I think that's, so the question was, uh, there was a come back later button in the demo survey that I showed, and the question was, um, is that a save and come back later, or does that just bail you out and you have to start from scratch? Um, and, you know, John's response, they disable it. That's part of the answer to that question. Uh, it, it's up to the institution. So you have the ability to include that button. That is a save and come back later button. You can even control what it says. So if you would rather label it save and come back later, you can. Um, and likewise, there's an exit button in the survey, which is different. The exit button just is like the eject. It doesn't save any of the responses. Um, and both of those are configurable, so you can include them both, include one, not include any. You can even schedule those to expire. So if you want, at, you know, 
thinking back to my college days and the credit card companies calling me and the intensity as you know, that bill became over. If you want the messages to get more and more um, urgent as time goes on, there's lots of different things that you can do. Yeah. Yeah, so, so we also have email reminders. So, um, you know, we, we use those two between the Canvas reminder, the calendar reminder, which is showed, and email reminder. Um, we're kind of using that, those, those three to get at students. And that combination works well for us. And the question was just how are you uh, kind of getting students to respond to this? So the question was, uh, what are the report template options? I, I actually, we didn't really use those. We just built, we kind of used a default template, totally customized our own. So I'm going to let Peter kind of talk a little bit more about the default templates. So um, reporting and evaluation kit takes sort of several forms. And there are project results which are organized by survey project or semester. And there's some standardized reports that are available to faculty. So as John mentioned, they set when those reports are going to be available to instructors. They set when they'll be available to administrators. And uh, you know, at that point in time, they get notifications that they can access their results. And there are standard PDF reports that are available. And that's the easy part, right? So instantly, they click, 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 and they're looking at results for their most recent courses. Um, there are also reports that let you look at the data over time. And so when John talks about eight report templates, we have an ad hoc reporting area that has eight different templates. Um, that allow you to look at the data in different ways, you know, by project, by department, and so it's kind of a mix and match. And that's something that we'll definitely cover in training. There's also a lot in the, in the system itself um, once you come on board that um, you have access to in terms of on-demand training, uh, help articles, tutorials, videos specifically on these types of topics. So that's reporting in a half nutshell. There's a lot more to it than that. Other questions? So on our, uh, in our institution, the registrars do. We kind of consolidate all that with the registrars. So you know, they know the schedule. They know when the course is in. So we have them enter in those dates. Um, but you could have any you know, administrative staff control it. Yeah. And one more thing on the reports. I just wanted to add um, one thing we find pretty useful is you can compare a single question you know, over uh, faculty or responses. So we. There's kind of a ad hoc, you can see just you know, one of our, if we think we're having an issue in a certain area, we can see those responses among our whole institution, you know, compared faculty to faculty, course to course. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, great question. So the question was, you know, is there a different approach for K-12 institutions? And I, I would start by saying our focus has been on higher ed because this is such a routinized process in higher education. It's been less so in, in K-12, but I think the advent of um, online programs has put a lot of K-12 institutions in a position of wanting this feedback from students. They're not seeing them every day. Um, they don't see them in the halls. They can't get this feedback. So they're looking for ways. and. Um, we have a number of K-12 institutions that we work with today that implement evaluation kit. It's pretty similar. Um, I wouldn't say that there are any, you know, words to the wise. Um, it's just been a, you know, we're earlier in the adoption curve from a K-12 side. And so far, the institutions that we've worked with on K-12 have, have either been, you know, virtual high schools, virtual schools, um, or some of the, you know, the elite day schools, boarding schools um, that are hyper eager to get feedback from students. Um, you know, early and regularly. Yeah, one more question. Yeah. In Washington State, the community and technical colleges are forming a trust, and we have many, many students who are at Bellevue Community College, at Tacoma Community College, other colleges, and we're finding that sometimes if there were two logins, one to Bellevue, one to Tacoma, they don't get the test results.
I, I really wouldn't have a, yeah, I, it would, I wouldn't even try to answer that question. I'd leave that to our technical folks. Yeah. Yeah, pre that's great feedback. I really appreciate it. Uh, you know, one of the things that um, typically administration is eager to streamline and automate this process. Um, and, you know, faculties may be or may not be, students may be or may not be. The, the, the things that we hear after implementation from instructors, uh, they really like the fact that they get the feedback so immediately. In many institutions, it's a very labor intensive process and it can take weeks, if not months, to get the feedback. And by that time, they're already teaching the next course and it's just too far removed. Um, so having that access as immediate as the institution is willing to provide it is terrific. Students also appreciate the anonymity. And one of the things we hear from institutions frequently is the open text comments that students um, respond to are richer and more robust, which is you know a good thing and maybe not always a good thing, but um, they feel A, they're more comfortable typing, right, um, than writing in a form, uh, and B, they, they feel confident in the anonymity because their handwriting's not gonna be recognized. So oftentimes you'll get richer feedback in those comments and not as rush, rushed comments when the students have time to type those in the survey online. Well, yep. Great question. So the question was, you know, how do you protect anonymity in courses with low enrollment, one or two or three enrollments? And there are features in the system, and I'm not sure how you guys handle it, but there are features in the system that allow you to either suppress course level results for any course with fewer than a certain number of enrollments. So their feedback is still incorporated into the higher level summary, but not at the course level for the anonymity's sake. Other institutions may have a process where they as a, as a rule, don't evaluate courses with fewer than X enrollments. And so you can bring the courses over from Canvas, load them into evaluation kit, sort based on enrollment or search for courses with fewer than X number of enrollments and then remove those from your project. That's a great question, thanks for that. I think we are officially out of time. Um, if you have additional questions, I'm, uh, we'll be at the uh, partner showcase for another hour. There's a contact form in the back if anyone would like more information or a demo offline. Just want to take a moment to thank my colleague John again for joining me today and thank you all for attending. Really appreciate it.